Hi, it's Lisa from Juju Crafts, popping in with a little project. I know it's been a while since I posted any, but I just wanted to show you a project called Ursula's Revenge. Trying out a new camera, so I'm not sure if the sound's going to be too loud or too soft or the lighting's going to be bizarre, but either way, here's a shot at it. I took those little skeletons that you can get on the garland, the cheapo garland that you can get at almost any craft store, even the dollar store sometimes. Around Halloween, you get like five or six of these little teeny six inch tall plastic skeletons for a buck or two and cut off one foot, tied them together with some wire and then just used hot glue to shape out the tails and clip them out however I wanted them. Just daw hair or human hair, you know, it's juju crap, so we won't talk about that right now. But shape them, form them, melt their little bodies, twist their spines, turn their necks backwards, arch their bodies draw some hot glue over their ribs and add alcohol ink. Make them just as gory as you can. And they sadly turned out to be pretty touching and sort of cute all at the same time. Really liked how they turned out. Added some mica flakes to get this more detail in the tail parts. What I did was is I put a little teeny table fan blowing the hot glue as I pulled it across. And it gave this great look of just like the flesh had rotted away and added some alcohol ink along with some metallics to give it a nice little sheen. Hopefully the camera will pick it up here in a minute. So you can see it looks a little bit like a dead fish anyway. I left them flat on the back. They're pretty plain on the back because I'm going to actually attach them onto a project later so I didn't want to give them anything on the back. No texture or details. And I formed her hands and all of their hands that they can hold different items whether it be a little staff or a book uh, this is da hair and it was nice and pretty and blonde but i didn't like that so i added some alcohol inks to give them color little green little red uh, all the charms including the crowns came from ebay uh, some of them are local so you can get them in a couple of days and sometimes you have to wait for a while all depending if they're international again added glitter glues Anything I needed to do to give it that fishy shape, the fishy smell. Okay, wait a minute, not smells. Let's take the smell back. No smells. There's no smells, just so you know. Uh, fishy look. How's that? Fishy looks, yeah. And again, left them plain on the back so I can adhere them to whatever project that I need to. I did want to leave the spine because she's going to be raised up a little bit. So she has a little bit more of a gory look to her. And this one, same thing. Just added some green alcohol inks. To give her more of that dead fish look and twisted her little arm so that she can hold a book and what I mean by that is this is the only one I've finished so far is I got one of those plain wood boxes from Joann's and they're just a natural wood this one is completely colored with Tim Holtz distress stains and whatever color and a little bit of a Krylon uh, metallic pen to give it just a little sheen here and there and I just rubbed it in with my finger to blend it in with the wood grain I added a variety of mosses to look at like she had washed up on the beach and even added a little patina here and there. Um, so I think she's a little upside down for you, isn't she? Turn her around this way. But you almost have to look at it for a while to realize that there's actually a dead mermaid on the top. She blends in so well with the moss. And of course, you don't have to make it like that. You can make it with different colors and different backgrounds so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, in her case, I wanted it to be where you had to look at it for a while and go, oh my gosh, that's a dead mermaid on the top of this box. When I folded her arm up, I made it to where she could hold this little bitty picture frame that I had found. It was in my stash. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I can't remember who made those, but there's so many little frames anymore that you can get from anywhere, or you can even form one out of clay or chipboard. The image is of a sailor. Got it off of the clip art from Google. So that would be the love of her life right there. And she just washed up on beach without any legs. Ursula wasn't kind. Took some real seashells, glued a couple together, put a nice little glass pearl in there to make it look like a clam. Some lichen. And actually this under here, even though you can't see much of it, is real sand that I just E6000 to the top. Made a little dangle. I used my Dremel to make a little hole so I could make a, add one of those little, oh, I don't even know what they're called, little hook hoops. So I could attach a dangle, Tim Holtz clasp, and a lot of little just fun stuff. It made a small dangle. This is not exactly a super chunky charm dangle. It's just a charm dangle. Added some paper in to make it look like a love note for the ocean. 
some Savarsky crystals mixed in with just some plain old cheapo beads so it looks like a better crystal it probably is. Freshwater pearls from Joann's. You can get usually a strand of those for four or five dollars. And like I said, all the charms came from eBay. Whether it be um, the mermaid charm, where she's sitting in her little circle, or this one, which to me looks a little bit more mystical, like a mystical mermaid. I didn't have um, the big seashell beads, so I took my Dremel to some beads that I had to have on hand, happen to have on hand, and turned those into beads that I could stick on a piece of wire. Inside the box, I made a little tag book using the graphic 45 by the sea. And again, I'm sorry if the sound or the lighting doesn't work out. This is my trial video to see how my camera works. It's new and I haven't played with it yet. I bought this pendant on eBay. It was a really pretty little, oh, I don't know what it was made out of, sort of a jasper carved mermaid. Fell in love with it, but I uh, just wanted to use a, a mermaid for the cover of my tag book. So I made a mold from um, the Easy Cast Putty that you can get from Amazon and then used amazing resin. Uh, dyed it with patinas and some uh, gesso, some point gesso, and added some real seashells around it. So hopefully you can get like an idea of what colors it is. Sort of a turquoise blue. And this is sort of washed out. That's the way I wanted it to look for uh, an ocean project. So it would be, well, more oceany. Again, added a little glass black pearl inside the seashell. Used amazing cast resin. And I think this came from a Mod Podge frame. I mean, a Mod Podge, um, what do you call those? Can't think now. Mold. And then just a little charm that I clipped the hook off of. Tried to make these where you could add a little quote to the side. This is from Martha Stewart, one of the molds that she had a couple years ago from her jewelry line and using clear resin. It's a little crab. I don't know if he shows up on there very well. He's a fun little crab. Makes me happy. Um, the clear cast resin you usually have to let set overnight. I, mean, I don't like that, but I like the clear look. The amazing resin, usually it'll dry in 10 minutes. This fibers with the little beads, these fibers with little beads, and these really fun fibers like this I got from a place called the Stinkin' Cute Scrapbook Shop and Boutique. It's in Blackfoot, Idaho. The lady there who owns it, her name is Dawn. It's a local shop, which I love to use local shops. Uh, she will do orders by phone, uh, as long as you pay the shipping, of course. And she has a fun, like I said, family shop there. I'll put her information in the more section in case you're interested and you'd like to call. She does keep some craft uh, supplies on hand and uh, just a fun little shop. If you get a chance, go to her Facebook site. It, she has a lot of great steampunk items and well as uh, Shabby Chic and Victorian. They redo furniture. Several local artisans have their items there. Again, another pendant that I made a mold of and made a resin octopus, colored him up with some alcohol inks. Just a charm, glued down some of that funky seaweed looking ribbon. Fussy cut out an image from the By the Sea paper line and a, uh, I don't know if you can see it very good, but it's a little shiny Brad the seashell. Tim Holtz die, just clipped out just a little bit there and tacked on some perfect pearls. Well, those aren't perfect pearls. Is that what it's called? No, I don't know what it's called anyway. It's Tim Holtz shiny stuff. We'll call it that for now. Uh, there's the mirror background, Tim Holtz. Um, little mirrored sheets and you can cut those out on if you can see it behind the charm there but they're fun to have in all your die cuts to pull out just a little spot use the acetate from the dies so that I always have keep a box my husband thinks I'm storing trash but to me it's craft projects right other crafters know what I'm talking about we're hoarders lady we're hoarders we have a problem anyway shrinky dinks everybody loved shrinky dinks back in the 70s we didn't have all this great Wi-Fi and fun stuff. We had Shrinky Dinks, and I still love Shrinky Dinks. You can still find it on Amazon and sometimes at Walmart.com, and it's uh, still just as fun as it was when I was a kid. Stamp your images on it, color them, cut them out, and shrink them. This is from the Graphic 45 by the Sea stamps, stamped images. Love this little mermaid. Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? Little sailboat. Apologize for my gross nails because I don't take care of myself like that. I like to play with craft stuff too much. 
little compass, just fun stuff. Stuck it all together with twine because it seemed like that made it fit in the box better. You can twist it and fold it. And again, pieces from the graphic 45 by the sea line. Little seashell resin mold there. Love the octopus. And a rhinestone with more trim from the stinking cute scrapbook shop. On the back, the frame came from eBay, just an image from Google, and I covered it over with the crackle glossy accents. I had not even heard that Ranger made crackle glossy accents, but they do. And uh, when I found it, it's just so much fun to work with. So there's one project for you. Ursula's Revenge. Thanks for looking.